Good morning and thanks for waking up with News 19 this morning. It is Friday, February 7th. Your time is 630. So this is what we're worried about today. Ice like this. Big ice, thin ice, black ice, stuff you can't even see, but this is going to be the major problem today. We have thousands of hungry kids every single day here in the Midlands, and in the summer when they're out of school, it just gets worse, but you can help. A reminder how special these dogs are and how helpful and useful they are to the department and how sweet, too. You look beautiful. Do you know this? Oh my, I love these guys. Don't you love these guys? I'm going to stay here, ladies. Now we're going to reverse it and show you again this time step by step. And I know he was trying to drive one of the those huge monster cars earlier, monster trucks, but I have a feeling they're not going to let you in that thing, Lyle. Not let you drive. Oh, what? You're going to prove me wrong? A very good morning to you. Thanks so much for waking up with News 19 this morning. I'm Lauren Tellerico. It is Friday, March 7th. Your time is 430. There is a very good chance you are waking up to showers this morning. We've been feeling it since yesterday and it's been coming down pretty steadily ever since. Several areas in the Midlands have gotten a good pounding of that wet stuff, but it looks like there is some relief in the near future. For a first check on your forecast, here's Amy Aronson. Good morning, Amy. In Greenville County, a man has been arrested and charged with murder after police say he killed a teacher and then set fire to an upstate hotel. Investigators say 21 year old Darren Askew strangled Lori Patton at a Quality Inn and Suites on Monday morning and then set the room on fire. He was arrested while driving her car in Georgia after going just 30 miles per hour on the interstate there. Patton was a special ed teacher at Berea Middle School. No word on a motive yet, but investigators say Patton was his former teacher. The Richland County Court has ID'd the victim in a deadly shooting at a Colombian nightclub. He's 34 year old Luther Mitchell. He was killed at about 1:30 yesterday morning outside Bananas nightclub on Decker Boulevard. Investigators say Mitchell got into a fight with a woman in the parking lot and then the woman's boyfriend joined in shooting Mitchell. Deputies say they do know who was involved and continue to investigate to see if charges should be filed. The Department of Mental Health is asking state lawmakers for a million dollars to put more counselors in our public schools. News 19 Stephen Dial spoke with the department to find out exactly what the counselors would be doing. A Minneapolis couple is thankful for a simple act of kindness coming at a time when their lives were anything but simple. Dana Shorto has their story. What a great story. Random acts of kindness really do make a big difference in our lives. Look at this. Can you see that breath? That's how cold it is out here. Okay, I am uh, right here on the Gervais Street Bridge. Literally, I'm touching the ground here. And listen, we're talking about black ice today. That's why several schools are delayed, schools are closed because of the roadway conditions. Now, uh, go ahead and pan here, but you can see that ice. This is solid ice, guys. I kicked this one a little earlier, but you can see it's not getting off those roadways too easily. And I want to explain why bridges are a little bit more dangerous than the rest of the roads. You always see those signs that say bridge ices before the roadways do. And here's why. When you're talking about the ground, uh, you have air coming from one place, the sky, right, from around us. And the ground still holds that heat so things don't freeze as quickly when you're just talking about those regular roads but bridges it's a different story and I'm going to use this piece of paper here to demonstrate why okay pretend this is a bridge you can see air comes from below air comes from above air comes from the right comes from the left which means the roadways those bridges freeze a lot faster than our ground does that's why they ask to be really careful when we're driving over bridges Many would call Jamie Fowler a meathead. He can bench 345 pounds, stacks out the shoulder press machine, and can curl 80 pound dumbbells per arm. Needless to say, this Midlands bodybuilder strength is impressive. But it's the strength that you can't physically see in Jamie that's the most impressive of all. I was born healthy, normal, fine. Um, like I said, I was getting ready for my vaccinations for school. Um, my parents had taken me to the health department. When Jamie was two years old, he contracted paralytic polio from the oral polio vaccine. I came down with a high temperature, a high fever. Once that fever broke, his right leg was paralyzed, unable to grow with the rest of his body. I grew up as, as with a walk. 
walker, learning how to walk. And then the older I got, you know, I had to wear a brace on my leg and then I had to wear the built up shoe. The oral vaccine that gave Jamie paralytic polio is no longer distributed in the United States, but it was a known side effect at the time. Dr. Hans Oliver with Providence Family Medicine explains. It was always known that, that there was a, a chance of getting, uh, uh, contracting paralytic polio from the oral polio virus, yet we still we still used it. We used it here in the United States. And one of the reasons that we used it is that the benefits of it outweighed the small, the small risk factor. So small, in fact, that only one out of every 2.4 million people developed that form of polio from the vaccine. Of course, that number isn't small to Jamie. When I was about 13 years old, um, my back and my hip had deteriorated so bad, I had done, been put in a wheelchair. And that was probably my lowest point. I remember in school, you know, my mom having to take me to school, and I, you know, the, the van door opening and the wheelchair gate out, and, you know, here I was, you know, a kid in school, you know, the, right at the right age that, you know, want to like girls and, and, and try to be impressive and this and that. And here I was, the kid in, in the class or the kid in the school rolling around in a wheelchair. Jamie spent two and a half years in the Shriners Hospital where he had a bone-breaking surgery, filling bone that he lacked with stainless steel and learning how to walk again. You have people who don't have the proper upbringing, you know, or or they don't have God in their heart, or, or and there's just downright mean people out there. He got picked on growing up, but a bit of perspective helped him grow stronger physically and mentally. I just thought I was bad. I just thought I had it bad. Um, when you're in that hospital, you see some things that will change your life forever. And his life did change. I do, I do not think of myself as handicapped. I do not look at myself as handicapped. To help build muscle and lessen the side effects of his condition, Jamie started working out with his friend and bodybuilder, Gabe Miles. He started coming in the evenings and I didn't, I didn't know how it was going to be, what he could do, what he wasn't going to be able to do. And he came and he never missed a beat. Gabe was so impressed, he convinced Jamie to compete in a state bodybuilding competition. He finished in the top 10. The first time I walked on stage, all the bright lights, you know, I was, I was, it was such an adrenaline rush. So from there on, I've been hooked ever since. <laughs> then he traveled to North Carolina, where he came in second. And I have a wife and a, and a beautiful little girl of my own. Um, I look at the things that I do. And, and I want her to be proud of her father. When Jamie was younger, his motivation was often based on fitting in. Now, his motivation is based on helping others. I have so many people that will just come over there and want to talk to you and say, hey, can I get a picture with you? Or, you know, just want to tell you thank you. And, and, and they'll tell me about, about situations about their children. Maybe that's what my purpose is. My purpose is to motivate people. If I can do it, you can do it. That's for sure. Call Jamie Fowler a meathead if you want to. Just be sure to add the words motivated. To this day, <laughs> the doctors tell me I should be walking with a cane, but hey, it'd be all right. I just walk with a little bit of a limp, no problem. And inspiring. It's been a struggle, but I feel like it's built character and made me who I am today.